Today I want to talk a little bit about the concept of density, because density is an important physical characteristic of matter, and we can use it because it is uh, a measure of how much stuff there is and how much space, then because it's a ratio, we can use it for dimensional analysis. So our definition of density is kind of as we're thinking about things on a smaller and smaller level because we're chemists, then we're thinking about how tightly packed the particles are in a given volume, right? So volume is the amount of space that something takes up and kind of how tightly packed the particles are uh, really has to do with, with the mass of the particles in those given spaces. So density is usually defined as the ratio of the mass over the volume, how much stuff in how much space. If we're thinking about this in terms of SI units, the SI unit for mass is the kilogram. For volume, uh, the SI unit is technically a meter cubed, right, because it's a distance length times width times height. So that gives you an area of a cube, and the area is the amount of space that it takes up. Um, but we think about a derived unit for volume of the liter. So uh, we could think about the SI unit as a kilogram per liter. Now kilograms per liter are fairly large units. If we're thinking about this in terms of uh, the U.S. customary system, when we think about mass, we actually think about it in terms of weight. So a kilogram is about 2.2 pounds. A liter we can picture because we have two liter bottles of soda. So if you picture about a half of a two liter bottle of soda, that's one liter, and 2.2 uh, .2 pounds being the kilogram, that's kind of a lot, especially if we're talking about individual particles for a substance. Because again, as chemists, we think about things on more of an atomic or molecular level. So this is kind of a large unit. It's a little bit unwieldy. So most of the time, density is reported in grams per milliliter, which realistically is just dividing both of these quantities by a thousand, right? So if I divide a kilogram by a thousand, that would get me to grams. If I divide a liter by a thousand, that would get me to the prefix milliliters. So most of the time, if you look up a substance, uh, it's going to be reported in grams per milliliter. And because this is a ratio, again, if I have a given mass, I can figure out how much space it would take up. Or if I have a given amount of space, I can figure out how much, um, how massive something will be. So we can use this information to solve problems that look like this one. So I looked up the density of gold, and it's 19.3 grams per milliliter. So if I have one liter of gold, again, picturing that half of a two liter bottle of soda worth of gold, which would be awesome, then we can look at its mass in grams. So let's set this up. We're trying to get from liters. We're trying to get to mass. So we should start with the quantity that we're given. That's our dimensional analysis here. We need to start with the given quantity, which in this case is 1.0 liters. Now I need to find some relationship that's going to divide out the liters, but that I can use my density to still get me to mass, because the mass is going to be in grams. So I have a gram there, but I need to find something that will get me to milliliters so that I can use this to convert from milliliters to grams. So because it's the metric system, I know how to get from milliliters to liters. I know that in one liter, there are a thousand milliliters. So that's good. That gets me to milliliters. And at this step, then, my liters will divide out. So now I'm going to find a conversion factor where I have milliliters on the bottom and mass on the top, because that's going to answer my question here. So I have grams on the top here, so 19.3 grams for every one milliliter. And this is an important piece about density. And I apologize that my screen keeps kind of uh, cutting out and freezing on you here. But density is 19.3 grams is equal to one milliliter. I like to think about it as an equality because again, these conversion factors have to be equal on the top and bottom because I'm essentially just multiplying everything by one. And that's how I can get away with converting units this way. So if I think about kind of unpacking this unit to say that for every one milliliter, which is one cubic centimeter too, right? One cc, which is one cubic centimeter. 
So if we think about um, a quantity of our gold, for example, that has a cube of gold that has a centimeter on each side, right? So length times width times height, each one of those is a centimeter, then that gold would have a mass of 19.3 grams. Okay, and that's kind of what the information that we're given from a density. So we can use that information then in our ratio here. And when we multiply this out, then we end up with 19,300 grams. Now there's a couple things that we have to do. We have to check our answer because this has physical meaning, right? So we're scientists, so we have to question our numbers and make sure that they make physical sense. So the first thing that we're looking for is, it, is it going to be greater than or less than the number we started with, right? So our original number was a liter. It was a liter of gold. We know that it has a density of 19 grams per milliliter, and we know that there's a thousand milliliters in this liter. So we're expecting this number to be quite a bit larger than one, right? So that's good. So far, so good. I don't distrust my calculator yet. The second thing we have to do is look at sig figs because we are thinking about the precision of our measurements here and density is a property of matter that's actually temperature dependent. So if I change the temperature, then I change the density of my particles because of kinetic molecular theory. If I increase the speed and motion of my particles, they're gonna spread out a little bit. So that causes things to be less dense if they're spread out a little bit. So we have kind of this relationship between temperature and density. Therefore, we do have to factor in sig figs. This is not a defining characteristic of matter. It's something that's measured. So I'm going to be limited then by three sig figs for my density and two sig figs for my volume, right? So I have two sig figs here, which means I have to have two sig figs in my answer. So these two are significant. This guy I don't have to factor in because it's exact, it's a definition. And this guy had three. This one has two. So we're going with our lowest, one, two. We're looking to this one to round. And in this case, it's less than five, so we're going to round down. When we round down, that gets us 19,000 grams. Or if we want to do it in scientific notation, which we do because it's clearer, right? These zeros are a little bit ambiguous. So to make it less ambiguous, then we're going to put it in scientific notation, which gives us those two significant figures. All right. So um, that's all well and good. But the more interesting thing is if I have that many grams of gold, I wonder how much that's worth, right? In my little one liter, my half of a two liter soda bottle, filled with gold. If I have this many grams of it, I wonder how much it's worth. So I went to the internet today and today is April 9th, 2020. So as of today, one gram of gold is 54.68 dollars so 54 dollars and 68 cents is one gram of gold so that's kind of um that's the current worth of gold so let's uh let's figure out how much that's worth again dimensional analysis to the rescue when we wonder about things right and we as scientists are always curious about the world we wonder th about the way that things work if i have this much i wonder how many skittles i could buy with it so if i have one gram and that's $54.68. Then it comes out to a whopping 1,038,920. Wow. <laughs> so my one liter of gold would be worth a whole lot of money. And again, I didn't take significant figures in here. How many significant figures should I have? Well, give that some thought. Kind of think about how you would round this. Because I rounded here, I would actually be a different amount of money 
right? Because I'd have an extra 300 grams from this one when I round it down, and an extra 300 would make a difference with the amount of money here, um, which is pretty impressive. So just another way you can use dimensional analysis, and we're really aiding that to the concept of density, which is how much stuff we have and how much space.